So just mentioned in chat, what if he doesn't produce like he did in Arizona? Then we're fucked. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what happens. Then we are absolutely boned. <sighs> okay. We have Bedard. We pretty much know we're going to be making that fifth pick in a minute. I got to use another timeout. Shout out to Montrealer, by the way, for the the lovely tier one sub. Thank you for that. You're, you're too kind. Maybe our luck's turning around. Maybe I will learn how to smile once again, even though this game has been doing its best to ruin my life. <sighs> so really quickly, really quickly. Goalie-wise, not making a decision yet. Someone's probably going to have to go. That is what it is. Defensively, not making a decision yet. Again, Sam Dickinson, I would like to keep. I don't know if I'll be able to. We do have that left defender we can draft. We know Bobby Brink's not on this team. He was just a part of a trade. Um, but Sador, Clapperton, Weeks, Coleman, I like for the right side. Left side, Kuba Wellwood, Makala, Bannock, who was really good at the playoffs. That's if we don't get rid of Makala. Center, uh, we might have to make a choice between who goes, Cooley or Misa. If not, we play, try to play one of them on the third line. <laughs> it feels like Lume is gone no matter what. I'd say Lume is gone. Not getting past the first round yet. No, we've gotten past the first round. We just lost in the Stanley Cup final. Bedard, Cooley, Misa, Chance. Bedard, Cooley, Chance, Pedersen. Lume is pretty much gone, and I believe he was a UFA as well. We'll go use Trade Finder just to see if I can get anything for him. But yeah, he's he is pretty much guaranteed to be on the outs. And yeah, it's just other UFAs, so... I got anything for Tulipoff? Uh, fourth rounder, a couple of fourth round options. Third rounder from Ottawa. If we take Jalen Struble's contract, so we'll pick uh, we'll pick that one. A third rounder for free from Ottawa for a guy who's not going to develop. Uh, Houtenen, he can stay. Petard on all four lines. Again, I don't even know if he's going to stay. I'm not getting my hopes up yet. I'm not talking about, hey, Connor Bedard's here because he's not yet. He's not. He is not officially here as a member of this team. He is not under contract. And until he is, I refuse to get hyped up. Looks like fourth rounder will again be on the agenda. We'll take the Isaac Howard contract. So again, we do have a lot of contracts that we've acquired via trade that will be dropping. Do we have any low fours? Not anymore, we don't. Okay. So draft pick wise, 5, 9, 21, 31, 38. Okay. Only thing that I want to check now is that fifth pick. But we're good. Like, we don't need anything. It makes sense to spend the fifth pick on this prospect. His value will be that of Hartman's. So really quickly, finger to the monitor. Eh, that, that fifth pick is worth more than the value of the guy that will be drafting with it. Which is a little bit concerning. A little bit concerning. Ackerman does look pretty good. His defense is only a B. But he is NHL ready. The reason why I don't want to get rid of him is that tape to tape. There is a chance he will be a huge point producer. We're going to take Kim Ackerman with this pick. 79 overall medium lead. Does have tape to tape. Has heat seeker. That's a big boy. That's a big boy. I'm pretty happy with that pick, actually. 
So again, that is who Matt Faye Meechkoff. I mean, in real in reality, Matt Faye Meechkoff turned into this guy and potentially Connor Bedard <laughs> in a way. So hello, the next Luke Shen, maybe. But Kim Ackerman, welcome to the team. So we know we won't be able to land Hika. The next pick that a team is willing to trade is Nashville at 13. So Oda will probably be gone at that point. But again, we do have the ninth pick. So Hika will not happen. We'll end up with Oda, Dicka, Whitman, Owen Wall, and there's Olison. So let's double check these guys. Let's double check these guys. So Cali Olison, another big left defender. He's one year out, unconfirmed bouncer. That's a pretty big risk. There's Jalen Wall, another big left defender. Unconfirmed one year out, unconfirmed abilities. That, that's another big risk. Left wing Landon Owen. One year out, confirmed beauty backhand. That's not bad. Lincoln Whitman, a right defenseman. Imagine. Uh, unconfirmed one year out, unconfirmed shrug it off. That's too big of a risk. Dicka, straight A's, NHL ready, has quick pick. And Oda, another left defender, NHL ready, unconfirmed shutdown. But these two being NHL ready, we got to look at at least one of them. And given that we just took a left defender, we're probably leaning towards uh, Spike Dicka. Especially with that Owen Nolan comparison. It is true that Owen has eight. Well, actually, Owen's uh, three out of four. I don't know if you saw my Discord message. Uh, AJ, I meant to get back to you on that. I will try to remember to get back to you. You're on the right track, though, in terms of pretty much how I judge rosters. You're on the right track. <sighs> okay. I'd love to be able to trade, but I don't think we can. LA at six. Take Hika. As expected, he's pretty damn good for a medium four. He is pretty good. At seven, the Sharks take Thompson. And at eight, Buffalo takes Veyu. So we do get our choice. We do get our choice of Oda, Dicka, or Owen. The benefit for Spike Dicka, he can play in the AHL. If need be. But he is also set to NHL ready. Oda and Dicka are both NHL ready. Owen is a year out. Beauty backhand, again, the unconfirmed shooting stat. It is true that Dick is a really good defensive forward, but honestly, having another good defensive forward isn't a bad thing. I think we have to go for Spike Dicka. Welcome aboard, Spike. 78 overall. Only has a silver quick pick, but that's still decent. You could argue maybe... Maybe it was worth trading the pick in terms of the value of the pick versus the value of the player that we had uh, in return. But left wing side, uh, we need help. We need help there. I don't think we're going to keep Isaac Howard, depending on how much he wants. We need we needed a few more options. Now we do have quite a few options on left wing uh, for these guys to hopefully make things happen. Should have tried to trade down. Yeah. We could have, but at 13, I don't think Dicka was going to be available necessarily, was he? I mean, Oda's ranked 11th. Dicka was ranked 12th. I don't think they would have made it. And then we would have had to settle for Owen, which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world, but it's not that much value left on the table. So 13, 14, 16. We could still try to land Owen as another... Half decent option here. We know we can give up that 31st. Is there anything else I can do? Baseball fam, what's up? Goalie wise, Mario Tiro. He's not bad, but he's he's expendable based on the amount of goalies that we have. If we use him in that 31st pick, out to Anaheim. The Ducks actually have the 19th pick as well, but this should allow us to get picks in the second round. This should allow us to get picks in the second round, or at least a pick in the second round. So 31st in row for 14 in the 46th? Wow, actually not enough. I'm surprised by that. Surprised by that. 
What if we try the 51st? Quite far off, really? I mean, I guess I understand the value of that other pick being that high, but what if we add a third? I love to curse franchises. I really do. Okay. A little bit pricey. A little bit more pricey than I wanted it to be. As Oda was a 78 as well, similar to Dicka. So we went with someone who was in more of a position of need, left wing instead of lefty. So pick 14. I don't know if Owen's necessarily going to have been worth that pick, but we are going to try it. 76 overall, medium top six, silver beauty backhand. He's not bad. He's not bad. Again, we've taken a little bit of a value hit on those last two picks, but it's depth that we needed. Our next target, number 27, the goaltender, Tim Cochran. No doubt, and we have pick number 21. He's got a medium lead defender. A Smith Pelly goes out to Anaheim. Olison was a 73. Wall. I'm just Silvers. Okay, we thought progress. he might be good too. Sharpie Don. Sharpie Don. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Detroit wants to trade at 27, but I am not willing to risk somebody not taking this goalie or someone taking him early, I should say. Uh, Tim Cochran. Three years out, gold contortionist. Yeah, we're taking you at 21, no doubt. 68 overall at 18 years old. Goaltending has been our biggest issue, and damn it. <laughs> we're trying to shore things up in the paint. We will eventually be able to find someone who can make a save. Our next target, 34, Tony Kiprasov. That is our next target. And honestly, it's going to be that first pick of the second round, the Vancouver Canucks. We have Carolina's pick. We want to go talk to them about that. Uh, we'll give up the 51st and a fourth. A bit off. It'll be two fourths. And a done deal with the Canucks that should land us Kipper. Unless he's magically gone. You know, it wouldn't be as painful if the AI were that smart all the time. If the AI were that smart all the time to recognize that that guy was going to be good, it wouldn't be that painful. But so often, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Except they seem to figure it out when it means they're going to be able to fuck me over. And of course, it was Arizona that got him. Now he is 78 overall, 18 years old. He does only have truculence, but uh, <sighs> all right. Well. Ortmeier, three years out. We know he has abilities, probably as a low elite. There's Nick Mathers, same thing. Jackson Strudwick, a little bit less convincing. Levesque was a bit less convincing, too. Uh, these two guys are our next targets. Uh, we'll be taking uh, Jaden Ortmeier from the Sioux Greyhounds with... Uh, with this next pick, but I can't believe Arizona just did that to me. So Jaden, son of Jed, how are you? 65 low elite, gold, big tipper. I would have preferred to also have ended up with Kippersoff, but Jaden Ortmeier, this guy should turn into an absolute stud. It's another prototypical power forward for us, and that's kind of how we're building things up at the top of the team. With Kuba, with Sador, and hopefully Jade Nortmeyer will join that class. We have the sixth pick of this round. I don't think Mathers will still be available. 
Let's trade with New York. Let's trade with New York here. We'll try to move up three spots to also end up with Mathers. And a fourth round pick was enough to do it. So Florida takes Holden. And we are going to pick up Nick Mathers of the Medicine Hat Tigers. 63 low elite. Okay, I feel a little bit better. I feel a little bit better. Obviously, that guy for Arizona is quite good now. But we just got two low elite with gold X-Factors. That helps a lot. Ort Meyer and Mathers. Both left wings as well. So our left wing depth is insane now at this point. Absolutely insane. There are some other players here who I don't think will be that bad. But I also don't think we can necessarily justify trading up to get them. Like, they're going to be decent. I'm aware of this. Shout out to Kent Pecker. Great name. They're going to be decent, but it's just not something that I can risk right now. Unless we know they are absolutely fantastic. I don't have too much value left. To be able to trade up again. So, Polly, what's up? How are you? Quinn Harvey. Yeah, the rest of this draft is looking pretty spotty. Sergey Emelin. Chance Hickey. Yeah, I mean, you can really start to... Uh, I know that guy might be an enforcer. You can really start to see the quality dip. Really, really quickly. So, a couple of shouts potentially for a medium elite. There's a lot of uh, a lot of two out of fours, which is no guarantee at all. Player of the week, take it easy. Appreciate you hanging out. I know again, late schedule is not easy, but we appreciate you. I'll go back to reading Kana as well. Have a good one. Ooh, another Keyskidin who could also ruin it for us. Yeah, we're at the stage where we have a lot of picks and we'll just be having to hope for the best at this stage, really. So, uh, we will sim to our next pick, which is pick number 66 in the third round. Again, there will be a lot of Piero Zabitals of the world. Unless somebody has a crazy high overall, which it doesn't look like, it wasn't necessarily worth trading up again. So, let's see. Uh, there is a best guess option, Quinn Harvey. Or, to be honest, we could trade out of the third round if it's worth it. We only have four picks in the third round this year. Fourth and a fifth next year. Third rounder next year. Take on Nate Danielson's contract. There are 47 offers for this. Well, we've seen a third rounder. Do I see a second rounder? Third and a fifth from Detroit. Third and a fifth from Detroit. Third and a fifth from Montreal. From the Rangers. From Tampa. We'll take that third and a fifth next year from Tampa. Honestly, pick number 68 as well. We know third and a fifth is about the going rate. Take that third and the fifth from Montreal. So yeah, just trade down, get third round picks next year when it's maybe not as risky. Any other third and the fifth options? Third and the sixth from Montreal is pretty good. Detroit's offering the same thing. We'll take that third and the sixth from the Detroit Red Wings and the final trade out of the third round. So that third and Danielson from Arizona. We get Miller back, who used to be ours. Third this year and a seventh. Montreal. We'll take the third and the seventh from Montreal. So we will make the rest of our picks. It's all going to be best guess. Like I said, I'm sure there are some decent guys available from the third round that we could have gotten. Although so far, we made the right choice. A lot of these guys are very, very bad. 
So we definitely made the right choice. There was a medium elite, Cali Nicholas, but I do not believe we looked at him as having any sort of information. Fourth round, there was Korolev, another medium elite, but he's 20. Uh, there was Rowe as a medium four. We did fine. Freaking knows it's just like hell. But we did fine. Couple of guys here and there, but yeah, it is an absolute crapshoot. So, an, ooh, another Dicka. Harold Dicka. Overager, though. Uh, well, next person we'll be taking the risk on. We, yeah, actually, we might as well just go in order at this point. So, it is going to be the German Matthias Kreutzer. Kreutzer? Kreutzer? He's terrible. That's the stage that we're at here. Best guess picks. We'll also take left defender Jesse Rikus. Who was also terrible. And again, that's why we traded out of the third round and waited till the fourth round. Jake, hello. Another German, Maximilian Becker. Bakar. He is also terrible. Terrible, terrible draft. Outside of those top two rounds. Peyton Barry. Low nine. Sixth rounder. Anybody else who's projected to go next? Who's on the short list? We actually have quite a few players on the short list still. Uh, let's go for Charles Delzato. He looks to be the most promising. And he is the low elite. 49 overall at 18 years old. Will probably never develop. Good trade value. Uh, we'll take Timo Barkoff. Terrible. We have another pick. Let's go for Elias McNeely. Terrible. You know how you know it's bad when even the best guest picks, none of them are panning out. Uh, we'll go for right D. Bedrick Janicki, the overager with this final pick. He is terrible. Cool. So we got one lower lead out of that. All in all, a uh, pretty big draft. 5, 9, 14, and 21 in the first round. And we acquired the signing rights to Connor Bedard. I just don't know if we'll land him. We got a lot of scouting deals coming up. How much does Bedard want? 